Oh, right. The Vulcan pipelines need to load first as well. I thought, hey, this was loading way too fast. Yes, because it was indeed loading too fast. There was another loading screen. Time is so nebulous. Ever felt like you're spending your free time wrong and that there's a right way to spend it? Pretty frustrating. I think I'm going to wait a little while before I do a let's play of this in master mode. Hey! Hey! As it currently is, it's way too broken. Thank you. 
upload the seeds unless you have a problem with that then I don't know what the fuck I should do with you Oh, 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 oh,
do Get happy ever after still exist I will still be holding you like this All the fairy tales are full of shit One more fucking love song, I'll be sick get the best of me uh, losing the skills suck but what real but what's really terrible is the fact that I all the souls I lost Excuse me? Alright. I'll need health rather than speed. Wouldn't want Hikari dying. No. Oh god, no. How do I stand corrected? Oh god, how am I gonna The answer is I don't. Watch out, man! Oh! Well, it's a good thing I did- <laughs> I didn't do anything. It really sucks that 
You need to manually reset your checkpoint or else you're back in the trying to resurrection. If saving used up resources or something, like maybe you need rupees, then that's understandable. But as it stands right now, this is just a bit of a pain. If the devs of the, uh, Dark Art and Resurrection is watching this, then, uh, hey, I gave you an idea to make this mod even more bullshit. Oh god, he's still there. You know what? I'm gonna murder him.
why. A bloopy. Again, why? got to the wetland stable. Oh hey look at this. Beautiful. Ooh. Dang it, I have no money. Actually, I don't need money. Of a larger I am shrewd. In this area. I'm thinking maybe 
As time goes on, a castle will start to emerge in this area, probably on top of the nearby hills, and that's going to be more yeah. power of the castle. But before we do that, I really do need to work on a surrounding for this storage system, because, oh my goodness, this thing has sort of been a thought in my side for a little while now, and I wanted to get that care of. Luckily, I have a plan in mind already. I have a plan for a much larger build that's going to go here, and this is only the beginning. I sort of don't want to show you the rest of it until we get into the time lapse. But I've been doing a bit of drafting. This is it with the blocks rendered in a more solid-looking way, so that you can kind of see the idea that I'm going with here. And a lot of it is more about texture than it is about depth and, and creating depth using blocks. I think we're going to have a fun time building stuff like this. But I've been gathering a bunch of materials off camera because while this all looks like stone and ignore the floating islands and stuff to the side, there's a couple of things further up that need our attention and need some more specialist blocks. Plus, I did end up trading a lot of my deep slates to Joey, so we might need to go and get a bit more of that. But it'll be nice to walk on in here and then walk straight down into the crypt to get us high. And I think we might be able to dress up the outside of this a little bit better as well. The, the interior of the exterior, I guess. Uh, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. But for now, I think I've got all of the plans in place, so it's time to set the timelines. Guardian swords are stronger than broad swords. <laughs> kind of like light and shadow kind of thing as though there is kind of both 
you know, nobility and still, like, the mortality of death represented here. The way I've structured this is really meant to represent the idea that this whole thing is made out of stone originally, and the sections that you see that are gold blocks are actually painted stone blocks. They've been painted over with gold, or they've got gold leaf or something like that, and that has worn off over time. Now, I don't exactly have, like, a pattern in which it's worn off, and I don't know why the central part would be more worn than the outside. It'd probably be the opposite, if anything, but I just liked the way this gradient came together with using the deep slate and stone and everything else, and a couple of blocks of nether gold ore in there as well, just as a weird little accent, but I don't know. I like that a lot, and I like the idea that this gold hasn't necessarily been stolen from the statue because it's not really gold at all, it's just gold plated or gold finish rather than being actively made of gold. And the same goes for the rest of the statue as well. There's a bit of copper in there, but it'd be pretty hard to get out of the sword to begin with, and the rest of it is all meant to be stone in various varieties. I also don't want to give the face any facial features to give the impression that it's been worn away over time, either by, you know, nature, erosion, or maybe it's even been broken off at some point and the materials have just crumbled a little bit. But the remainder of the statue is left standing and perhaps has been preserved unnaturally by some kind of magical force. That That's not normal. The building process or something that is very dear. I don't know, there's a couple of options there, but if my options don't as far as that kind of stuff goes. The fact is, though, on that kind of scale, putting facial features in the statue would not have looked good, in my opinion. I feel like it would always kind of look a little bit awkward, so I decided to just leave it blank. And there's even some dripstone segments hanging off it, which could be earrings worn by this this lady, but they could also just be, like, areas where the stone has started to suffer the effects of erosion and, you know, water dripping off of it, leaving deposits on the stone below. I will show you the back, although you're not going to be seeing too much of the back, because what I really want to do is build some taller buildings around it. Because frankly, the back of this isn't really all that spectacular, and the fact that the hair is made out of andesite and diorite and stuff kind of blends down into the dress in a way that's sort of unavoidable, really. So what I'm ultimately going to do is build a few buildings around the outside here. I really wish I could have you know, actually floated down into that tree. Uh, I'm going to build some buildings around the top here, or maybe have like a, a, a short path that goes around the back, but you only really look up towards the wings. You don't really see the bottom half of this too much because it's just a mess of stone. Ultimately, it's got to look like a dress, but in the end, it's not especially pretty from the back. And speaking of pretty, the inside needs a little bit of work as well, because this still just leads down into this cave system that would lead down into my catacombs. I want there to be maybe a tomb that's been pushed to one side or something, revealing this passage below. I kind of like the idea of there being drag marks on the floor as well. I'm going to see if I can get something like that on the go. But the inside of this is a largely plus-shaped design. It's not really all that special, and if anything, the pedestal itself turned out pretty basic-looking compared to what is above it, and I like that. This really draws the attention and allows this to just kind of be a standalone, fairly straightforward stone build. But I hope you guys enjoyed the time-lapse, and our Angel of Death, or Protector, or whatever she is, is now in place. So I'm going to get a bit more stuff done on the inside of here, going to remove the landscape, do a little bit of dressing up on the inside. Let's see how we get on. And after that, the catacombs got an upgrade. I still haven't finished decorating all of these areas quite yet, but behind the scenes here, I have set up item filters for each of the major groups of materials that we've got going on here, at least the major blocks, because I haven't really got room to put in a filter that's going to filter items by category, but I do have single item filters for all of the blocks that you see here on the floor. And the cool part about this is that we can drop stuff in from above into water streams, and that's just going to go all the way around here, meeting every single hopper as it goes in one connected system. And I start to put in the water streams, I still have to put in ice blocks and stuff and slabs to make sure that all of the items can continue to transfer properly. But fingers crossed, this should be a simple enough system to set up because it's all in a regular pattern. I designed this whole layout so that it's sort of in a, a H kind of shape with the two arms on either side leading out to tombs. This one here for the valuables is all going to be manually sorted, and there's going to be manually sorted storage around here as well. But that chest in particular, this one above it, are of particular interest. If I get up here, in here, I think this is where I can the other entrance. Yep, there we go. We can go all the way around here. This leads to all of the stone my types FBS and stuff limit. like that. So right over here we have things like the uh, deep slate, the black stone, the tuff, and everything is going to go in there. And then as we come on down here, we get to the wood section. And the wood section is basically the last stop 
on the tour for all of these items as they go around. But of course, we need a place for the items to go when they don't have a home in our storage system. So these last three are the nether wood types. It actually skips over the last three chests and they are the wood from Celine. And then That's it reaches the, the end here yes. where it gets deposited into That's the inconsistent. hopper. Basically the overflow for all of the wow, items. Wow, this is frame rate for... It's right here in this corridor. So basically, all of the items that don't get put into the system, anything that isn't sorted by the... Normal Zelda on the switch. Ow. Shit, I swear I dodged. It is my pleasure. While now I should be able to restrict the items I put in the chest to just the ones that I need to sort in, and that way I'm not going to end up in a system where a bunch of items accumulate on that hopper and then despawn. The main thing I want to do is ensure that there is a significant enough place that I can drop stuff down from here, something that is going to upstairs. So I think it's the case when you enter the catacombs via the main entrance under the stairs. Side, we have this large tomb that's sort of been pushed over to the side, and I've tried my best to emulate drag marks on the floor because there's no way people would be picking this thing up and moving it all by themselves. We've got another tomb towards the back there, these sort of wall recesses, of some of which are holding candles, which I kind of like. And this entire area, by the way, despite the fact that it looks gloomy, thanks to the candles, the glow lichen, and the occasional other concealed light source, this whole place is actually spawn proof. Like, sometimes it gets down to, like, block light levels of 1, but it never dips to 0. I haven't actually seen mobs spawn in here since I've been working on it, which is a very good sign. It means the system is working. But it looks like the hole I just dug came out here, and I'm not the biggest fan of that, actually. I would sort of like it to be somewhere over there, and that's why I left the majority of the space blank. I figured there could be a chest here for offerings or something like that, and that's what would allow me to input items into the storage system via a drop clock. But... Uh, honestly, I'm not certain I want the offerings to go here, so maybe we can reroute the water streams. I'll figure out what that's going to look like, but I really, really like how this came together. As a storage system, it feels quite unique, but it still includes a lot of the modern features that I like to have in storage systems, like the ability to sort some items automatically. But aside from hooking up the automation, hooking up all of those item filters, yeah, I was concerned this was going to happen. I want to have a room here for the valuables, you know, the diamonds and gold and everything, all of the stuff that I'll probably want to keep in handy. It's going to be right opposite the entrance, which yes, I know opens me up to potential item theft, but people on the server know better than that. I could move this tunnel over by one block if I wanted to, so I can scrape a little bit more space out of here. Alternatively, we can have the stairs rise. Why does so the bowl have long throw? Yeah, and that way we can avoid accidentally cutting into the water stream at the back there. So if our offerings chest was literally here, for worthless, example, where does that take us down to? Honestly, that's not too bad. The items could go this way, hit the wall over here. Water stream can carry the items. Yeah, yeah, operate on the assumption that I should be able to get that working. We'll have a drop o'clock feeding the items into the water stream. We'll close up this one here, and I think the chest over on that water stream should be good to go. A short time later, our water stream is in place, and this place will forever be haunted by the Way too many hoppers. So over here we have our input chest or our offering chest. I suppose this has got a redstone lock on it, so this is a trap chest. It means that anything I put in here is going to get sorted into the system until we close the chest, meaning that I can be a little bit more selective about the stuff I'm putting in there. And that will go all the way around the system and should end up in the chest over here, except right now there are a couple of things that are still in the primarily
other major discovery I found, or at least you know, something I want to get into finer detail, is that overlaying blood lightning on top of the place terracotta, especially when it's surrounded with snow. And proper like this, it looks like the organization is going to start to break up the plane and just leaves this effect somewhere else. It looks like quite a bit of natural light to the area. Whoa, 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 whoa. around this someone's gonna have to preserve it i mean really oh my goodness well uh yeah i got a ghast head while i was in the nether i need to probably grab some dirt from the surroundings and start replacing some of the blocks <laughs> this is an endangered habitat basically yeah let's dig a couple of blocks of dirt here so we can be certain that any mycelium we take from here will end up spreading back to the blocks and i think we can get a couple of samples here and that's all we'll take, and then we'll try and farm it renewably at home, because this is the only place I've been able to find a mushroom island so far. Yeah, apologies for the flickering of the mushrooms there. We're going to have to do something about that in the resource pack, I think. But one quick nap on the sea then, and I should be on my way home. And in the end, all I did was bring out some of the dirt that I'd been converting into mud, and leave it out here to convert into mycelium instead. A couple of seed blocks, and we have renewable mycelium, which is going to be perfect, actually. I'll need a lot of mycelium for a later project, and... It's just going to be so much more convenient than going out to other mushroom islands or finding out that poor little mushroom island out there in the middle of nowhere and just completely destroying it. No, I think it's a lot better to have a new mycelium back here. Hopefully those things can be preserved. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and added the mycelium to the system now that I was able to farm a little bit of it. And our offerings chest over here on the left-hand side can have a bunch of stuff added to it. Let's throw in some netherrack and some mycelium. When I close this, the hopper clock will start to run and all of the blocks will head down here into the system. Nice I can go into free though. camera mode to show you that there are water streams there all the is. way around here and I line them all with copper so that it can slowly age over time and it will definitely be a block that if I mine around here I will know not to break, otherwise the water streams are going to spill out everywhere. But all of the mycelium should now be ending up in this chest here. As you can see, it's all filtering down there quite nicely. The netherrack, however, does not yet have a place in the system because I'm going to store all this of the blocks from kit. the nether in a downstairs area of the tombs manually along with the end and probably the skulk stuff is going to go on this side so the nether on that side skulk on this side and this chest right here has now received the netherrack. So because there are two hoppers behind here, it kind of splits the output there. So we ended up with six netherrack in the top chest and 10 in the bottom chest. But when I was testing the system earlier with a variety of other items, they all made it to this chest as well. And you'll notice that none of the mycelium has ended up in here. It's all been filtered by the storage system. So that's working splendidly well. But when you come down into here, there is also now this tomb immediately opposite. And this is kind of given pride of place because this is where all of my valuables are going. We've got a variety of chests around the walls here with most of the precious materials you can find in the game. Ancient well, debris doesn't have every anything now and then. in here because I'm probably just going to keep that separate and use it for like loot in other people's structures. Speaking of which, at this point, Joey Graceffa has now gone and done the first dungeon that I made, the first custom dungeon that I made for somebody else here on the server. So if you haven't checked out Joey's episode yet, go and watch that. It's an absolutely fantastic episode. He does so well with the dungeon I built for him, and there will be a making of video coming out on Monday for that, so stay tuned for that. I recorded it a while ago, so it's kind of coming out out of sequence, but I think you folks will get a kick out of seeing how I built everything. But in the meantime, all of the riches that I still have are, like I said, stored here in this system. We've got uh, emeralds kind of stashed away over here as well. Like, I decided to put some of the more precious materials behind the iron bars, wow. and that way It'll look like some of these have had iron bars in front of them so that the tombs would not be tampered with, but over time the bars have, like, you know, corroded, fallen away or been broken or something like that so that people can get 
at the riches inside. And goodness knows, I will need a lot more redstone than this before the series is over. I'm going to do a bit more right, work on I'm the tomb today, crafting. trying to get those nether and end sections done so we can put the finishing touches to the interior. But before all that, I have to head over to spawn because Sheriff Jimmy has let us know that there is a book over here full of laws that we all need to abide by. And I am kind of curious what exactly that entails. Let's see, I think this looks like the chest for it. Please respect and follow the law. Courtesy of the sheriff, we'll take one of these. Uh, yeah, I presumed it was just going to be a bunch of copies of the book. And let's see, Empire's SMP law made by the sheriff. Law number one, do not disrespect the sheriff. Yeah, that one was going to be pretty obvious, to be honest. A lot of people out here disrespecting the sheriff in various ways. Okay, what's law number two? Always try to establish peace. Sorry, always try establish peace between empires. Yeah, fair enough. I mean, that seems like a, a sensible thing to do. Keep the peace. Three, no stealing another person's mount. Yep, makes sense. Four, no stealing or trying on another person's hat. Well, I'm not wearing my hat right now. My hat's hung up somewhere, so uh, nobody gonna steal that. Respect the land of empires. Always a good rule to have on a server like this. You don't want to have anyone building in each other's backyards. And obviously, I'm a big fan of people respecting the land, especially after my mountain got half destroyed. So I can definitely get on board with that one. And the last one just says, do not break these laws or you will have a visit by the sheriff. And everybody should be quaking in their boots at that part. Well, I think I can abide by these laws considering that, you know, my role on the server is not the most confrontational, so I think that'll be fine. In fact, always trying to establish peace between empires kind of makes sense to me because there is definitely one person who I wanted to patch things up with after our recent interactions. So I think we can abide by rule number two and try and establish peace between myself and another empire in particular. Oh, hello. Oi, 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 grand entrance. Hello. <laughs> there he is. Hi. The, 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 the most lawriest of entrances. Oh, yeah, well, I have to do law entrances around you because you you are the law man. <laughs> um, I come with gifts in hopes of exchange. Oh, um, really? Yeah. All this stuff in here. Oh, oh yes, very nice. I, <laughs> I've heard that the these in particular are a, a hot commodity. They're, they're pretty rare these days. Collectible, one might say. Well, I, I'm always willing to restart. If, did I set the oh. limit of foods I can have to <laughs> Something about literally this just very wrong. the gonna, exact gonna, same as yeah, normal? Right. I'm so smart. Like I'm so good. <laughs> yeah, totally, totally. I, I'm in need of frog lights now. Yeah. Frog yeah, no, absolutely. Um, I got a whole bunch of them. What color do you want? Or do you want a mix of all three? Yellow. Yep. Gosh. Can I have two stacks? Yeah, absolutely. For all the stuff you brought over, definitely. Like, I, as you can probably tell from around here, I need lots of moss. So the fact that you've, you've yeah, well, sweetened the deal with some moss is very, very good. I have a moss farm to give it to you. Oh, perfect. Yeah. I, I was, I was, I was probably going to make one at some point, but if you've got For my third there, divine beast, that's, what I'm going to do is uh, decrease yeah, my yeah, inventory like this limit. Is, this has fostered peace Sell between our stuff. empires in a weird sort of way. Oh, and and adhering food. to the norm. And, uh, yeah, I'll throw in some more moss just in the future in case anyone comes around and you know, Like that. You've heard nothing. Just uh, remember how nice I am. Are you, are you spelling lawsuit L O R E S U I T or no. is it L A? It's the L A. I wish it was spelled that way. <laughs> yeah. This is my lawsuit. I'm wearing right now. Oh no, it really is. Yeah, yeah. We're both wearing our lawsuits uh, today. Unfortunately, it's the other one. So yeah, you may hear about it in the future. And, uh, <laughs> just remember, I'm I'm nice. I have boss. Okay. You have okay. been you've been demonstrably nice today. We have it on record. Yeah. So uh... good, good, good. <laughs> All right. So you know my character. Anyway, thanks so much. I'll speak to you in a bit. All right. See ya. Bye. And there we go. Peace. I guess I can put the moss blocks through the system. Actually, that could be another good stress test of the system, putting a large amount of material in there. But that should all be filtering down into this one over oh, here. Yeah. Lessons. There we go. Look at it all coming in. Perfect. Perfect. Now I can just stash the rest of the gold up in here, which is going to be a nice, a nice way to recoup all of the gold that I put into the statue at the beginning of the video. If I can only remember where the gold is kept. There we go. Thirty-two Ooh, blocks. That's pretty really nice. Like, uh... This little man in my hand right here. <laughs> I feel like that's going to be something else. Never mind, I'm not interested. I might need to make a little glass case for him or something like that. <laughs> Preserve him as part of the story of the server. Well, for now, I'm going to put him in a safe oh. spot and I'm going to continue working on the nether and end storage. So uh, I'll see you folks on the other side. Okay, the details are coming together. I'm pretty happy with the way this is turning out. And there are some areas down here where I expected these lower catacombs to be some of the more.
more gloomy ones, but frankly, you can't really avoid the lights. The way we've got the block swapper set up, some of the lighting blocks, like shrew lights and glowstone over here, they go through the sticky pistons, so even when everything yep. is concealed by the block swapper that we've been using for the storage system, the light still shines through. So mostly what I've been doing is making sure that there are lanterns and glow lichen in some of these better lit up corners just so it doesn't flicker too much when we end up swapping the blocks over. But aside from that, a couple of these tunnels and stuff like that, a couple of the different corridors have fallen in. I'm still adding a bit more detail at the intersections, but I liked using a little bit of different glazed terracotta. I don't use these blocks enough, so this is an opportunity to include them. I have been trying to put a bit more detail into each of the side rooms as well, and as you can see down here, this is the side that leads to the end and the deep dark stuff. We haven't really got the deep dark in here yet, but I was thinking maybe one of the tunnels could have been taken over yeah. by Skulk, maybe coming up from the machine further down in the world there. But I've got this room here, which is all of the end blocks and the frog legs because they fit really well with each set of end blocks plus there wasn't really like more than a couple of different blocks of end stone and purple and then over here this is where the skulk goes and i'm leaving some space here for i don't know what at this point i've been looking through all of my other blocks in my storage system and most of them are either represented or are small enough sets of blocks that i'm really worried about having a double chest or two dedicated to them so Maybe this is going to be miscellaneous storage. We'll probably have a different section somewhere else for mob drops. Or those can fill in some of the corridor chests. But I think as a project, we can more or less call this place complete. I think it's pretty functional, and I'll finally be able to move all of my storage out of that hole in the wall over there. Well, folks, thank you so much for watching this episode of Empires. I hope you enjoyed this, and honestly, the statue build is, at this point, my pride and joy. I'm pretty proud of it, and I think it's going to be one of the landmarks of the ancient capital for the rest of the series. But even after all of that, we've still got a lot of work to do around here, so I'm going to leave it there. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Empires SMP. My name has been Pixorus. Don't forget to leave My a... name has Looks been like Pixorus. It's, it's such an odd out row. more full of boxes of stone in there. What has been? Be wondering, what will it be after the video? Ago, yes. So this episode is going to be a little different from the usual ones. In fact, this is going to be very out of sequence for those of you who like to watch this stuff in order and pay attention to like what tools I've got in my hotbar and how many levels I have and what's in my inventory. This has been recorded basically just after I've done the frog light deals with Whip and Little Sausage, but this video is going to come out way later than that because I'm going to be going and building something which is part of somebody else's store. And this is going to happen well get rid of this. throughout this series. I'm going to be building stuff that other people are going to discover, but you're not going to see me building it until after a that weapon, story has so I played can out. Get a point. Well, it's pretty important that I don't end up spoiling things, and that it isn't part of the story that I went there and made that. Part of my mission statement for this series, as you guys remember, is building stuff that's okay. details, that's part of the world, that's already stuff that should have been here before we all started the individual journeys that we are on, and it doesn't really make any sense for me to have physically gone there and built that, so I want to avoid spoiling that stuff ahead of time for people who are going to watch, for example, Joey Graceffa's series, which is what we're going to be attending to today. And the dripstone here is actually going to come in really useful, because I need that for what I'm about to build. So I'm going to throw all of the stone back into my ender chest, and then I'm going to grab a couple of other supplies. I've been out mining a bunch of calcite from a distant mountain biome, and not the one that's immediately outside of my front door, Joel. But I'm also going to need to bring, let's say, a couple of stacks of diorite, We'll need a decent amount of tough wherever I've left that. Oh, uh, looks like I still do have some in my ender chest. Well, that's okay. We'll definitely bring that with us. I'm also going to need some blocks of raw gold, and we'll probably go and collect a few more of those before we do anything else here. And because I've already smelted a lot of the gold that I mined from near my base, it's time to head out to a place I know there will be some gold. This is the distant Stony Peaks biome that I got all of my calcite from instead of mining it from somewhere directly next to somebody's base. Joel, and just over the ridge is this enormous Badlands biome, which is, once again, not Jimmy's Badlands. And if we dip into the stone layers, we can be expected to find some gold pretty quickly, so I'm just going to grab a bit more raw gold, and then we'll head over to the build site for today's project. And so this right here is the area that I've been preparing for our build, because Joey wanted a skeleton pirate's hideout, and there's pretty much only one way I know of making a skeleton pirate's hideout, and that is to create a giant skull. I kind of wanted this thing to look a little bit terrifying, so I've been building it in creative for the last week or so, 
and I've been using a couple of tools to do that. I designed the entirety of the outside of the skull here kind of freehand, correcting a few things as I went. Now, it's not exactly the right proportions for a human skull, but then are these human skeletons? Like, that's the curious thing about it. But the back half, I ended up learning a bit more about MC Edit and editing in a sphere and, and just kind of cutting it off at the back there. So what you have on the inside is effectively a pretty large cavern that we can fit some kind of dungeon structure into. Luckily that stone trade with whip has given me all of the materials I need. There's a little bit of mud around the inside of that, there's some tough and a bit of coal ore and stuff like that, but realistically most of this is just going to be stone, and a site and the calcite for the team. Okay, let me go to this area and see if the game crashes. Out in the Mesa in the first place. If you're a diligent watcher of Empires, you've probably already seen this in Joey's video, but I hope you'll have fun watching it Fire together. Fire crap, so it's always going to storm. I'm here Let's followed by a time. crash. No crash, wow. Lowering my FPS wouldn't change how often the game crashes. I think I'll go back to 48. I recorded 30 FPS, so that won't change how you guys see things, but it will change how I see things. I wanna see what will happen if I increase the draw distance to the enemy. It might reduce the crashing if they're spawned ahead of time. Rather than all of a sudden as I come close to them. For Dark Army Resurrection. But we'll see. So with the exterior done, I've lit the interior up for now. I'm probably going to change the lighting in here a little bit later on, but it prevents creepers from falling on me and damaging the build, although there's still a 
couple of them are hiding up here in the rafters. And I've started working on the layout of this place, which is going to be quite tricky. It's quite a large space in here, but there's a lot we can do that will fit in. And I wanted to make this place feel a little bit more like a pirate's palace of sorts. I don't know. We can fit some really cool details in here, starting, of course, with these walls. The docks down here have got to feel a little bit more opulent, I want to say. They've got to feel kind of like the pirates are flexing a little bit, which is why I'm using deep slate coal around here. It's not as rare as people think it is, to be quite honest. And we got some gilded blackstone in there as well that I scavenged from the first few bastions I raided. And, of course, chisel nether brick, which has only added a few versions, so it's kind of an underrated block that a lot of people don't know about. You can also get correct nether brick now, and I was thinking about incorporating some of that, but I think it works really well. It's still keeping the jungle feel of having mangrove wood around here, but then some of the darker materials in here in a real kind of checkerboard of patterns. So we're going to extend that all the way along. We're going to have a staircase up here, and I'm going to put some skeletons out here in the boats so that when the Pirate Joe rows on in here, he's going to have a couple of archers to deal with. And maybe we'll position some skeletons up there that fire down on him as he's trying to find a way up. Of course, one of the difficult things about doing anything like this in Minecraft is that he could always just camp out there in the teeth and pick them off from a distance with a bow, which is entirely fine. Like, I don't want to design these experiences so that they can only be solved one way unless we're really getting into, like, dungeoneering and puzzles and that kind of stuff. But this is going to be more of an action experience. There's going to be a couple of puzzle elements to it further up, but I think for now at least we've got the foundations of something pretty cool. I need to grab a bunch more material though because despite taking down all of that jungle wood I moved that back to my base and kind of want to get a few jungle wood pieces in here for the remainder of the docks and then we'll work on using the flat ground up there we'll probably flatten that out we'll use as much of the natural terrain as possible to give this some elevation and we'll kind of come up with a walkway that you can get up to and then from there I think it's going to come out into the roof there are going to be a few sections up here in which maybe some of the more dangerous challenges lie but maybe the prize is going to be up there the whole thing will be basically ascend the tower and claim the prize at the top of it. That allows us to fit a little bit of parkour in here as well, and I think we can do something cool with that later. I also need to grab a little bit more raw gold just so I can fill in the rest of this tooth because it looks like it's got, I don't know, a like a, a composite filling in there. Once again, these pirates are going to be flexing, and you can't flex with a gold tooth We're all I know, this can just make things okay, worse. Okay, enough talking. You get the general idea. Let's crack on with the build. So a little bit of time has passed. A little bit more work has been done. I'm just starting to sketch out ideas for the interior here. I'm really happy with this wall section so far and what I'm thinking is going to happen is the pirate Joe is probably going to come in here he's probably going to have to fight off a couple of skeletons here at the docks but we'll maybe think to dock his boat somewhere around here and I might try and shore up that wall a little bit to make sure he doesn't try and go for one of the other bits on the sides here but once he's caught those there's a couple of chest boats around here which he might not worry about checking right away but if he does He's going to come in here and he's going to find a couple of shovels. A stone shovel, a gold shovel, maybe here and there. Some pretty basic ones, but something that is going to be surrounded by other loot so that the shovels are at least a little bit disguised. But the shovels are actually going to be the key to solving a couple of puzzles in here. So as we come around here, maybe there will be skeletons kind of hidden underneath this section up here so that he's going to have some stuff firing down on him. Maybe it'll just be, a, you know, a walkway of sorts. But once you come up here and run along to this side, you get to this little divot at the top of this rampart section of wall, and it is here that he's going to find the first campfire. And the cool thing about campfires is that they have two block states, they are lit or they are unlit, and that means we can detect whether a campfire is lit or unlit, and whether that changes by using an observer underneath. I haven't got that in place right now because I'm still not sure quite how the redstone it needs to be wired up. But my thinking is that these campfires, when they are doused using a shovel, or maybe using a bucket of water if he wants to do it that way, can activate certain things elsewhere in this build. Whether they you know, activate certain lights that maybe light the way up to what the objective is of the overall area, or potentially they could even be you know, things that activate certain ledges. Maybe they push them out with pistons so that a parkour section becomes easier. So if Pirate Joe figures out the way this is going to work, do I have silk touch on my axe? I guess I don't. Well, there we go. Campfire lost there. <laughs> but if he goes around and extinguishes different campfires around here, it can lead to elements of the parkour being a little bit easier, or potentially lead to other types of treasures. You know, a, a section can open up in the wall here to indicate, you know, there's a treasure behind a, a locked door, a pistol. I like that idea. I think we 
we're going to roll with that. But right now I have to go and grab a bunch more materials for the stuff I want to build around here. And I've also got a live stream to do, so I'm going to head off and pretend that I'm not doing any of this right now. And we'll have to come back to all of this a little later. So I've been working on this project for a couple of days now, and a lot has changed. Uh, the outside is still looking fantastic, I think that's going to be perfect. And inside I've managed to put together a whole bunch of scenery, which is going to largely set the stage for Pirate Joe to raid the Bandit Hideout. I do have a couple of skeletons already in the boats over here, so I'm probably going to try and avoid them as best I can. Their line of sight is... Uh, something to be reckoned with and they're gonna be able to shoot at you basically the entire time you're running around here unless you end up dealing Ooh. with them first. So I think it kind of gives you incentive to check out the loot chests that are in the boats. The chest boats are gonna be really good for this. I'm gonna take care of some of these drowned in the process because we don't really want them interfering and getting in the boats, which they've done a couple of times actually. But there's gonna be a few chests and stuff here on the docks so that, you know, you can imagine stuff being loaded in and out of boats there. We might put a bit of like loose loot inside of there but nothing too spectacular. Once you go up the stairs over there I've tried my best to make it so that you can't really parkour your way up to the higher levels and you kind of have to follow the intended route. Obviously you could bring blocks and peel her up if you wanted to. That's kind of up to him really. But if I duck past these skeletons and try and avoid getting shot too many times with arrows, there we go, just one to the backside I guess. Revise and that's Gale a is now ready. So you get up to this part here where I'm going to have to deal with a couple of areas that are poorly lit because I don't want creepers ruining the experience either. You get to this point here and at this point you kind of reach a wall. There's obviously some stairs up here, there's some stairs in the floor, but it seems like they've fallen down here or something is preventing them from creating a path upwards and it's clear that the path continues from there. So once again we turn to this mechanic with the campfires. I've decided that this one here is going to activate this staircase basically. So hopefully Pirate Joe takes the hints, douses the campfire and is going to be able to walk on up here. And from this point it becomes a bit more about freer exploration. Over here that. on the left we have a tower which is currently where I'm storing all of my shulker boxes and various supplies. We have a little joke the employee of the month here. I thought that was kind of funny since I have these skeleton skulls and I figured having skeleton skulls around here as a bunch of skeleton pirates feels a little bit weird but we'll do something with that a little later. Here we've got some cannons. I'm really happy with this blackstone cannon because it's got the aperture at the front is so wide because it's all stairs so I think that'd be kind of cool. We've got a couple of smaller cannons backing it up to either side. Over here we have another little campsite and it's here that our second campfire is going to be extinguished and that's going to create ledges on this back wall that will allow them to get up to the higher level of the cavern here because right now that sheer wall is preventing you from going any further and there isn't really a place that you can climb up to it. I've made sure that especially up here in this tower there aren't any ledges that he can hop to. These barrels don't lead to anything that's kind of too high and you know you could maybe parkour your way up there if you were especially skilled. There's a couple of spots up there that you might be able to parkour to but generally speaking that's not the idea and I think going around the cavern the intended way is possibly going to be easier. You can jump from here to this kind of raised canopy kind of thing so maybe there'll be a way to get up from that but over here we have this weird little chapel i decided to have like a little bit of like buildings as though this skull base had almost been either created around this chapel when it was here on the shore of the ocean or alternatively that one of these have been built inside of here and then the skeleton pirates have taken it over there's a few barrels and whatnot around here but there's also a target practice Hello. Hello. What are you doing? Playing Zelda. Why not Genshin? I already did my Genshin stuff. I don't feel, I don't feel like doing anything further than just that. Have you finished Shiner's quest? No. Nice. So I think I'm about I'm I'm like doing the, the, the main story right. I got I finished the domain where I was inside the room shit. Uh-huh. Then I needed to go to the uh Aramite camp. Oh, we are friends now, apparently. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, you're actually getting pretty close to the end. Very close to the end. I'm pretty sure as soon as you get back and deliver the village keepers back, then that's actually the end of the story. For now. Alright. So 
OS logging into Genshin. Uh, what day is it today? It's 16. Ah, a best reset. Wait, already? Yeah. I thought I was until Abyss tomorrow Abyss still. Abyss. My bad. I am not good. A best reset's on the half of the man month. <laughs> Black. And you haven't done that. <laughs> I Shall sure we? Alright, sure. Just let me go get the Master Sword. Nice. Oh, let's gonna go eat a little bit more. Baked macaroni. Nice. Yeah, Baked mac. So good. I don't know why we have Baked Mac, but hey, Baked Mac is Baked Mac. And it's delicious. Oh, so good. Easy thing, man. Yes. Anyways, so what up? I'm gonna. I'm just gonna go solve the puzzle real quick and then. I guess I'm doing the goddamn the best. Still, talk to Neko. Yeah, before uh, before I do a piss, I'm gonna do continue the quest. Nice. Yeah, yeah, sure I do, quest yeah, since I'm doing my own stuff anyway as well. How are you doing your own stuff anyways? I'm dad. Damn it. <sighs> I got dad jokes. I know. You always do. Fell for it. Thunder cross a split attack. You just got the water dog. Raman, we are here. I sure did. Oh, I have key. Let's see what's in here. So why? So basically, uh, Kusanali is small version of Ruda Ketaba because she she used power yep. and she grew small. Are you fucking kidding me? Why the hell does a shield have attack up? So Resty, what you're saying is there are there isn't two tender arguments. Yep. This is oh, the reincarnation. Oh, this is how the Dendro Archon decided to deal with her withering thingy. You know, something all the Archons Resty. are trying to deal with. Wow. Resty, like early, like the other day, you said that uh, Ru Ru Kataba, you know, the the, the Dendro Archon is King the Shred, but you, that's not true. I said, <laughs> I said King, King the Shred, the the Desert King, and Greater Lord Rukadadadu are betrothed. They're husband and wife, not that they're the same person. They aren't. Where'd you get that wacky idea? I never said anything like that. You want to come on? Wow. Wow. Dinga. Uh, I need to charge the controller. It's blinking. It's about to go low back. Yeah, it's so disappointing how little how little battery life this controller has. I miss my pro controller. Why did it have to die? Let me try charging it again.
go back to Village Chief's house. Hmm. Hmm. Can we unlock all of the teleport waypoints first before we do shit resting? Yeah, it's probably a good idea, but I'm too lazy. I found a I found a fishing spot by the way. In the desert, amazing. Yeah. Sand jewel. Let's see. So this place has forty percent. I'll do this wind thingy. That thing is a me. I got nothing for it. I go to the evil statue and sell off some of my things since there's some of my life points and stamina points since we will definitely get an excess due to this mod. Huh. Mm. Get some extra money that way. Right. That's a chest. I'm getting the Master Sword and that's it for this video. You. That's it for Resty's video. Hmm. Go, 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 everyone. Hmm. Yeah, boogers. for you. What the hell is this? This what is a very deep soul resting. Nice. A deep desert hole. Always been like this. Oh bullshit. Bullshit. What is bullshit, Rest? What is bullshit indeed? Bullshit is bullshit. Everything is bullshit. True. The June of Karoons. Anyways, I don't understand how the fucking puzzles in the desert work. Like, when you were going to the Eremite camp, well, not the camp, the, the, the decided fucking meeting place for giving the hostage, uh -huh. you, you do a bunch of shit, right, that you can interact with, the puzzles. 
Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I remember those. Yeah, those shits. I don't understand how they work. Some of them, at least. Me neither. I kind of just winged it, and then it eventually worked, and I was like, okay, let's just move on. I don't, I don't care. And really, the thing is, there's fucking shit. Like, the... There's invisible fucking walls and floors and ceilings that we can just walk on. Yeah. And I don't know how they, they were. Can we fucking get rid of them? Because I saw that drop in us and I can't get it because it's underneath. The, the invisible fucking... The invisible platform. I couldn't go down. Because there was no way to go down. And then I saw a door, and then the door was locked. I don't know how it opened. All I know is that it's got something to do with the shit. Alright, I'm doing the abyss now. And there's some... I tried to interact with some other shit.